is Patrick here. Welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, stopping by every week and subscribing to my channel. We're doing everything watercolors here. And as you can see, we have another beautiful watercolor here. We're going to create the glazing technique. So this is just something where if you want, you can stop the video here, pause it, and you can work right from this uh, painting if you want. Um, you can sketch out from here or you can go forward and pause on the uh, pencil drawing and then uh, watch the video full through and then come back to the beginning again and then pause on this scene here and this way you have all the colors you need all the shadowing the darks the lights you have everything you need once you pause and paint from this so once you paint from this you're going to get the feel of the darks and the lights the first glazing wash as well as the darker darks once we let the first wash dry uh, for the glazing technique as we, we said we are uh, doing in this video. So um, I'll just leave it paused here for a second. You can check this out. And uh, from here we'll start the video in just a few seconds. Alright, we're starting back up again right here on Curtis Petri on YouTube. Hey, hello everyone. Alright, we're back and we're getting going here. You saw the finished painting. So we're basically just going to um, create this painting that we're going to do here. A beautiful uh, seascape boat painting with just two brushes. A uh, Alvaro Castanet number 10 needlepoint brush and then a number 16 uh, Da Vinci Maestro brush round watercolor brush. So you can kind of see the two brushes and their size. And uh, that's pretty much uh, two brushes is all we're really going to need. It's going to be a lot of wash, wet washes on here. Beautiful color, some boats. You're just going to enjoy this tremendously. And you're going to see how simple it is just to really do, to create a beautiful uh, boat painting here, you know, along this uh, shore, seascape. And uh, Let's get started now. I, I did a couple hash marks here just so you have that. So I just use the Sharpie. Top of hill, we're going to make a hill up here. That's where the boats are going to be up here on the hill. Bottom of shoreline here, we're going to have a little hash mark down here for bottom of the shoreline that's going to kind of slowly meander down this way and then trail off the rectangle here like that. So there'll be some ocean and this might be an inlet or a bay over here. Um, we could also do a um, this could be the uh, water line. Water. And again you're going to see how fun and uh, enjoyable this is. We're just going to have fun with this. It's a simple, uh, you know, boats and some ocean, tons of water. This will be a glazing technique. So we're going to do the glazing technique here. And let's start out. So we have our hash marks here, the water, bottom of the shoreline. So we're going to have a shoreline kind of going that way. And uh, let's, uh, let's go for it here. All right, so let's start out. So we're going to do some ocean here first. And we'll do a boat here. Okay, and that's a boat there. And there's another boat here. Coming down to the foreground a little bit. Again, you're seeing I'm doing a few boats, the bows of the boats, and then we'll have another we're going to do this over here. This is going to be, and if you run into an issue where you have a slight uh, issue with um, 
with a pencil line or something, no big deal. I'm trying to find an eraser. You can always erase things as you go if you need to. Okay, so we can use this here. And again, I'm not going to get too fussy with all kinds of really, in, you know, tremendous details. I just want to sort of and a boat over here, and then we got the shoreline. Okay, there we go. And we have some boats and then uh, there's a rock maybe here. And another rock here. So we're going to have a couple rocks along the coastline here. And, and some lines, just some, some lines just to kind of indicate that we have some movement here. We'll use our brush and make some marks with our brush. So we'll put some um, marks with our pencils so that we know when we're using our brush as we're painting to do the same movements. Some curvy lines just to kind of get some interest going. This is the uh, shoreline area here. And then we have the uh, distant shoreline here. So we just take that this way like that. Okay, so we have some distant shoreline, nothing too fancy or, uh, um, you know, just going to try to keep it simple. Maybe what I'll do is I'll back up a little bit here, so to speak, as I erase a little bit. I want to make the, I want to make this go like that, and then make that just water. So it looks like there's some deep ocean out here. So you kind of feel like you can go out into the deep ocean this way, so we don't want to block it off with this, uh, these hills and distant uh, shorelines here. So we'll keep the distant shorelines over here. Ocean here. You can flow out into the deep ocean here if you want. And um, let's sort of keep ourselves true to uh, nature which means we need to keep this sea level the same. So that means I'm going to take a ruler. I'll find a ruler, something. I have a ruler here. Okay, so we'll use this ruler here. We'll just drop it down like that, and that'll give us our sea level right there. So that's going to be our new sea level. Just to keep ourselves on track, we want that sea level line. even. And that's it. You're, we're pretty much done. We've got the drawing in. Uh, let's do a couple a couple masks here, some lines. And there's some mass back here. So, rocks over here, and I'm just trying to get that rock feel. Rocks are more angular. Sometimes they're round, but angular seems to be more
here and there just just so we remember to put a little couple rocks here and there happy rocks here and there we don't want to just have one or two rocks we want to have lots of little happy rocks around here and uh, maybe a little couple uh, mechanics box where they keep their tools as they work on the boats <clears throat> okay perfect let's take a break we've done the drawing you can see very loose you can make a couple details maybe on the boats. But other than that, we are fairly good. A couple windows on some of these uh, boats here. Couple windows there, just like that. And a couple details, just to remember as we're working, let's get some details in there on the tops of these boats. There might be some things in the background. Let's make a couple background shapes just to make it interesting. Okay, perfect. That's all. That's all we need. The whole the whole idea of this painting is lots of water, lots of beautiful color. We're going to use blues, greens, warm colors, the golds, yellow ochre, raw sienna, raw umber, lots of greens, blues. You're going to see how beautiful this looks. Okay, let's uh, take a break. Once we do the drawing, let's take a rest. Then we'll come back and we'll start working, okay? All right, we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Chris Petra here. Hey, did I mention subscribing? If you hit that subscribe button below, you're going to be on the fast track to learn about watercolors, learning all the details, the methods, the techniques, the excitement of all of the details of watercolor week after week. So uh, please take advantage. If you um, subscribe, there's the little button below right over here on the right hand side of your screen. You hit the button, the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. There's a little bell insignia there. You hit the no notification bell, hit all notifications. This way, every week you're alerted when our video comes out, you check it out. If you like it, you're gonna be working on it. As a watercolor artist, you need to be here every week uh, working on these projects. Even if you're doing a small part of the project, you try a little bit of it, you just get the, you know, to be familiar with everything. Um, sometimes you might just watch the video and you might not paint. You might have not, you know, you, your time might be restricted. Sometimes you're too busy, you can't paint, but at least you watch the video and you just learn something new. And, or if you're learning something, you know, that's, uh, you've already learned before, you hear it a second time or a third or fourth time and it just really will uh, be something you'll remember so that the next time you're in and you're doing a watercolor painting, you're going to have that knowledge right there at your fingertips and in, in the back of your mind. Okay, so. Let's get our painting going here. We have our pencil, ske pencil sketch done. We said we were going to use our two watercolor brushes. Basically a 16 watercolor brush here. This is a uh, Da Vinci Maestro 16 round watercolor brush. You can also use, uh, uh, they make great um, uh, synthetic brushes in the same size. Uh, Princeton makes some great brushes, Princeton brand. I use Princeton brand as well sometimes. Uh, synthetic, synthetics uh, are really excellent. They handle great for watercolor. And then I have my Alvaro Cassini brush, which is a number 10 needlepoint brush for the fine details of the masts and the rigging. We're gonna use that too. Two brushes, real simple. Now, um, maybe I'll use one other brush. Well, let's just stick with this, we'll stick with this. Okay, so I load my brush up with tons of water and I just put tons of water, just slop it on. We're doing the glazing technique here, so we're just, just sloshing on the water. 
across the whole painting. Just throw it on there. Get the whole paper wet and moist. And that's about it. You just got to go one time, lots of water, and just let it sit on there. Then, sorry about that noise. That's my uh, water bucket there. I apologize for that. I got to be quiet when I do that. So, next thing is I grab a tissue and I just mop up some of the water dripping down the bottom here, like that. So I mop up some of the water I sloshed on there. Like that. Okay. And then now we have, we've flooded the paper with lots of water. Not, not an excessive amount. It shouldn't be flowing all off the board that you're working on or so forth and all over the floor and the tables. You just got to get it just a good coat of water on there. Fresh clean water. Can't be muddy water that's been sitting in your, your bucket. You got to use fresh clean water. You get a nice dampness of the paper and here we're using um, Fabriano Studio grade watercolor paper which is a little step below the professional level uh, Artistico but it works great and I use it all the time okay so now let's get right in we're gonna start putting we're doing the glazing technique of course this is the glazing technique where we wet the paper and what we do is we do a light wash first, let that completely dry 100%, and then we go over with the darks. So let's do that. All right, so now I'm going to say, what are we going to use? Now, one important key point here is I want you to work from my finished watercolor, which I show in the beginning of this video. Work from that. Um, it's not always that of a good game plan to paint from a photograph. Sometimes it's good, and I suggest you do that too. A lot of you like to work from photographs but I really suggest you work from this finished watercolor painting because then you can match all the colors exactly, the tonal values, the darks and the lights, and then you'll have a really easier time trying to recreate this painting. And if that's what you want to do is you want to paint this painting just like it is, just work from the painting in the beginning of the video. Or you can wait till the end too, it's, it'll be either or. Okay, now, let's get our colors, let's get uh, Greens, we need greens, olive green, sap green, olive green, sap green, raw umber, some golds in there, some, you know, warm gold colors. Uh, we need some viridian also, some burnt umber. So let's just kind of, you see, I'm just kind of mixing stuff around there, nothing too. Nothing too uh, cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue too. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, looks good. Viridian, viridian green. Let's get some viridian in there. Then, damp brush with some water on it. Flow it on down. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little darker. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, with the greens and the golds. Get that on there. I'll flow it on down. It's that easy. We're going to be. We're, this is the glazing technique. You're, you're taking advantage of the water, the the beautiful luscious water of watercolor. Like that. If you want to go a little darker, make it darker couple darker lines like that and then flow some water on there there you go if you need to lighten up on a few spots the, the lights gonna be coming from the left hand side so let's before we keep going lights coming from here okay so then we're gonna put some I'm gonna lighten up by taking a tissue and blotting up some paint off the these sides of the boat over here the I guess the right side of the boat actually but if we're looking at it here it's on the left
look at that beautiful color. Okay, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. Verdian green, burnt umber. Mix that down a little bit, make it a little more grayed down. Okay. You can see I'm just mixing my colors. And there we go. Large brush. We're not going... Uh, with a small brush and taking forever, painstakingly taking forever to do our washes. No. We are going with a fun large brush and just getting on the colors. We will uh, go with some darker tonal values over here by the shoreline once this all completely dries. Let's get back into it over here with our greens. Sap green, raw umber, some yellow ochre, mix that all up, burnt umber, a little bit of French ultramarine blue, try to just get a mix of colors and let it all happen. More greens, I think we need. Burnt umber, some warm colors here. Look at that. Now, as we're going, we'll go right over those rocks. They're going to be dark. These rocks are going to be really dark. So we can go right over those. And we can sort of do some green here. Maybe some raw umber and burnt umber over here. Lots of water. Then let's get some really nice dark green, French ultramarine blue and sap green. Let's do some, wow, look at that. Bam! We're going to just really put in some real powerful color in the foreground. Look at that. Wow. Sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Some splashes. Some viridian green. And then some more just wet brush, a little bit of, you know, pick up some water, put some water on there, on your brush. Get some more dark green, sap green, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Really get in there and do some fire and some darks. So you want some darks in there, like that. Some greens. And then some of that dark. And then I'm just going to do some brush work here. Tons of water, as you can see. Splashing. Blue. Splash over here, a little bit of blue. Look at that. Oh, this is watercolor, everyone. Enjoy it. Tons of water. Flood it on. Get the colors going. Have fun with it. Do this five, six times, ten times. Do this painting ten times. Each time, have fun. Enjoy it.
darker colors down here in the foreground closest to us and then as we go into the distance lighter colors we could take some green put some green in there maybe some uh, gold some yellow ochre some yellow ochre here and there maybe a little bit of yellow ochre there and you can see the The paper's buckled. Here, let's get in some shadows. While it's still wet, no problem. Let's get in some of these shadows for these boats. And that's the main thing here. Let's get in those shadows. I'll just stick with the same colors, cerulean blue, this one here maybe. You can go over with a darker color once we let this all dry, but let's get in some shadowing as we work. You can see a little bit of the browns and darks there. Dark shadows under the boats. Okay, some water. Let's do some burnt, uh, some French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. Let's just get some of that water back here, and some water over here. And we can also go in green, burnt umber, sap green, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. Let's get a a cooler look to that. More uh, cerulean blue in there. Let's see if we can get a nice uh, shoreline here. There we go. We'll put that shoreline in. And there's like a little bit of a like a uh, cliff over here along the side of this let's put a shadow there that's some of the uh, shadow colors and as you can see this is really very uh, f free flowing watercolor we're not we're not as detailed this time we're using the glazing technique just the tons of water tons of water here and now we're at the point let's 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 let this dry. That'll be the best thing for us here. To let this all dry. Okay. What's good about this uh, Fabriano student uh, paper, studio, student grade paper, is it really gives you some great textures. As you can already see down here, we've got some great textures happening. You're not going to get that with the other papers. This studio paper has got some things that really work for you as a watercolor artist. You want to investigate that kind of thing because, you know, you can really get some incredible... Uh, artistic look to your paintings with happenings that go on with the paint and the water and the texture and the uh, paper uh, texture which really can enhance the look of your watercolor so I'm just trying to lift up a little bit of paint here along this area 
We'll fix that a little bit later, no problem. Let's let this dry 100%. And it's fun to try to get some washes fusing together, wet and wet. That's why I'm kind of continuing to work a little bit, but there is a point where you kind of have to just uh, let it let it dry, which is what we're going to do that now. And then we'll come back and we'll do the finishing touches. But really, you do all this work like this with tons of water, tons of paint. Let it flow around. Let it, ha you know, happen. Let it be happy and just free flowing. And then you'll you'll see. You let this dry. We'll come back. We'll do our we'll do our second glazing over the top of this, and that'll pretty much be the finish of the painting. And you'll see how really incredible it looks. And it really has that signature look of watercolor. So let's come right back in just a few minutes to uh, finish up the details of this painting and uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay, we're starting back up again. Let's get in our darks, our darkest darks now. Uh, we just talked about how we used a large round brush to get in our really light washes, lots of water, lots of color, then we put in some darks, you can see here in the foreground, we put in some really dark blues and greens and burnt umbers and raw umbers. We mixed around a little bit of um, yellow ochre here and there, you know, to kind of give it a nice warm and cool feel. But lots of uh, water here. We flooded the whole paper with water. We wet the whole paper first. We're doing the glazing technique, of course, as you follow me each week on YouTube. I always mention, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there below, right over here. And also the notification bell, you'll see a little bell insignia if you uh, hit uh, all notifications. This way you get uh, notified every week when we're doing our videos. You'll see what we're doing, what we're working on. This is everything watercolor on my site here on YouTube. So you're always going to have that uh, watercolor uh, paintings that we're doing. And we're also drawing and sketching before we paint. So you're learning drawing skills, you're learning your watercolor skills, your techniques, your methods of watercolor. You're learning different things like the glazing technique, which we're using right now. You're also going to learn a la prima method of watercolor painting, which is more the direct approach, where you're just starting out in one location, painting out from there, starting with the darks. So you'll see as you go, if you subscribe, you'll each week you'll learn all new methods, techniques in the watercolor medium. And this way you can really get a great handle on it and uh, your paintings will get much better as you go. So stick with us here. We're going to continue on here in this painting. And again, we did the glazing technique here. All the light washes first with lots of water. We wet the paper with clean water first. And now we're at the point where we've let that all dry. Our first glazing dry. We did plug in some uh, darks here and there just because, you know, we can add some darks in there as the watercolor painting is drying that first glazing so you can add in some darks but you do want to wait until this dries completely to start doing your second glazing which is more of your darkest darks so let's continue on we'll do our darkest darks and we'll finish up so um, here <clears throat> since we're doing the darkest darks we don't have to worry too much about cleaning our palette we can leave our palette as it is it looks like I'm going to need some paint so I will grab my paint. I usually keep my paints real simple and organized. I have some Ziploc baggies. All the blues and greens and the cool colors are in my one bag. And then I have a second bag with all the warm colors, the reds and the golds and the yellows and the uh, warmer, like the earth tones, burnt umber, raw umbers. So the warmer colors in one bag and the cooler side of my palette in the other bag. And then I just, if I need to fill up my palette, I just grab my bags. Let's do the first. Uh, we need some French ultramarine blue. Let's fill up our French ultramarine blue. And then we have enough cobalt blue, I think, over here. So we're all right with that. Any other blues we need or cool colors? Uh, sap green. We need some sap green. Let's see if we have sap green. We have some Viridian. I think we need Viridian too. Let's add some Viridian. 
Okay, let's look for our sapling. Okay, sap green. And I usually only, only add my colors if I really see they're very low and almost, you know, none left. It's just in case I might need it. And so that's sap green we just filled there. And I think we might need some burnt umber. So let's find the burnt umber here. Okay, burnt umber. And I think yellow ochre. We need a little bit of yellow ochre. Maybe some raw sienna too. Raw sienna. And let's see if we can find some yellow ochre. We can make do with what we have there. Okay, let's go back in. I might change just maybe a touch. I'm going to go with a little smaller brush now. A number six uh, Da Vinci Maestro round watercolor brush. And let's get some darks going. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green. Burn Sienna. And let's see what we have here. Okay, let's go under here. Some darks under there. And some more darks there. So I'm just putting in some darks where I know I'm going to need them. That is. Okay, this is the other boat there. And we'll do some blues over here. And I'm just doing some shadowing over here on the boats. Using some blue with some of the darker mix kind of mixed in there just a little bit. And this over here. Maybe some raw umber, some warm too. We want warm and cool. Like that. Okay, so we have some darks going now. We're in good shape. And uh, and a little bit of wash on this white paper. Maybe we don't want to leave a completely white paper. We could leave some white paper, you will see. I have left some white paper. Let's get some cadmium red. Maybe we'll have some cadmium red here, just for a little bit of excitement. And maybe another stripe over here. And I splash a little bit just to Maybe lizard and crimson mixed in with the cadmium red. Give us a little different red over here. Maybe another stripe on the boat over here. And 
And then some dark darks again here. We're going to do some windows. And some more darks here just to and again we don't have to be perfect nothing is perfect here we're just having some fun putting in the darks and uh, we're in pretty good shape here a little bit of maybe a little bit of darks under here for a shadow under there Okay, so we have some beautiful boats up here at the top of this hill. Um, we got we have some French ultramarine blue and sap green. Maybe we're going to go with a little darker dark there. Let's go with some darker dark here for the water, the ocean, the deep ocean there, darker. And then maybe some raw umber. Maybe we'll go with some raw umber here, just a little bit of, for the shoreline over here. Then maybe some cerulean blue for a little cooler distant color. And then some darker darks here, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. French ultramarine blue, sap green, maybe some other shoreline colors that are a little darker, closer up. And then again, let's do some raw umber, a little bit of burnt umber and French ultramarine blue, mix in with that, sap green. And then maybe we'll just have a little shoreline over here. Just some indications of a little shoreline over here. A little splash in there, maybe some rocks. Some more rocks over here, so I'm going to splash just a few times, not a lot. Then we're going to do some rocks here. Let's get some burnt umber and some and some uh, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Lights coming from this side this way. So to the darker dark over here. I'm making the rocks more with angular shapes versus, you know, there's some round shapes and then there's some angular shapes. And then maybe there's some light starting to catch over here. Like that, and then another rock formation here. French ultramarine blue, burn umber, darker darks here. On this side, darker darks here. Okay, so we have some rocks here. If 
French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, sap green, maybe a little bit there. And that's all. Just some rocks in the foreground. And we're starting to really get the feel of this scene. Light washes first, glazing technique, let it all dry. And then we go in and we do our darks. And you can see how once we go in and do our darks over that first lighter wash, everything comes together beautifully. This is really complete except for maybe just a few details. Let's take a quick break. I'm just going to take, you know, a few minutes. I might just put in a few more darks here. French ultramarine blue, maybe a little cerulean blue, a little bit of green. A little bit of shadowing under here. Lights coming from there. So we have a little bit of shadow coming, light coming from here. So you can see we have. The shadowing effect. Okay. Let's let this dry just a few minutes and we'll come back in and we'll just do our final details, maybe some of the rigging on these sailboats here and there and some of these fishing boats. And we'll have a completed painting and I really hope you'll uh, subscribe again, have fun, come along every week. We're doing new paintings, everything, seascapes, boats. We're doing uh, street scenes, figure painting, landscapes, everything, you name it, we're doing it here, watercolor, everything watercolor. And I uh, hope you're enjoying this and uh, we'll have a fun time as we finish up this painting. So stick around, we'll be right back. All right, we are finishing up our final details here. And we said we were going to use our uh, needlepoint brush. So we have our needlepoint brush here and let's get that in to our paints here. We got French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, maybe a little bit of Cerulean blue. And let's start doing our some of our rigging. That's all. And we're just doing some rigging, just some rigging lines. And we did the pencil marks first, so we kind of have an idea of what we want to do. We'll mix around some colors. Maybe we'll go with some uh, yellow ochre to change up the, the colors a little bit. And back to our blues and such. There we go. Looks good. Perfect. Now, let's uh, we'll go back. We'll use our number six round brush, and what we're going to do here is let's go with some more French ultramarine blue with some of that uh, yellow ochre that was mixed in there, and some burnt umber. Let's let's do a little sort of like a just a tight a bit of a tree here, you know, like a little brush, like some brush or like a small tree. Let's see how that looks. 
So I'll put in that first bit of um, I'll put in that first bit of heavier uh, branches. Just like that. And what that does is it kind of just gives us a feel of more fore foreground, interesting foreground features that make it uh, more three-dimensional. So, and I'll put in some uh, sap green here. Let's put in some sap green, olive green maybe a little bit of even cadmium lemon yellow. I didn't use that before, but I think we can kind of use that here a little bit with some sap green. I don't think it'll be, if we kind of muddy it up a little bit here, we won't. And this is where we'll do a little more fine. Uh, with our needle point brush, we do some really nice fine twigs and branches, and that really looks just great. Gives it a whole new feel here couple coming back at us here like that perfect then we pick up some more and then we just do some splashing here and some quick little dabs and whatever you know just to give some feeling of leaves maybe some more olive green sap green let's just do some more like that scrub around just like that. Just have some fun. Scrub around a little. Some branches. And that's all we need. There is just that little bit of foreground interest. Like that. And I thicken it up a little bit like that. There we go. That looks good. And that will, what we've done is we've created a lot of three-dimensional quality to this with this extra bit of uh, feature with this uh, small bush here. And I wouldn't go too crazy. That's about it. Right there, what I've just done is perfect. You don't want to do any more than that. Maybe I went overboard a little bit with this, but I don't think so. I think that looks pretty good. And uh, there we have it, a perfect nice you know really beautiful seascape scene with boats so it's a boats and seascape scene lots of beautiful rich darks a lot of beautiful transparent lights in here as well to give you that real beautiful glazing technique type painting let's take the tape off and kind of see how it looks now as we uh, finish up here and I think it's just going to be pretty good just the way it is and uh, You'll see it really looks a lot better once you have this tape removed. It gives you that perfect framing. It's almost like a mat when you buy a mat at the store, at the framing store or at the hobby shop. You put a mat over your painting and it just crisps, you know, crisp, gives it that beautiful crisp edge around the painting. It looks wonderful. So let's do that. We'll peel the tape off and there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to do a lot, a lot more paintings just like this. Uh, going forward so grab you know hit that subscribe button and subscribe we're gonna um, uh, each week as we go on we're gonna do more paintings like this the glazing technique seascapes we're gonna do landscapes we'll do figure painting we're gonna do um, street scenes everything watercolor so this is the watercolor watercolor channel come on by each week and if you don't like a certain painting we're going to do, no worries, just come back next week, the week after, you'll find something you like. We're going to do flowers maybe eventually in the next, in the next couple weeks. So we're always doing some new subject matter, whatever you like, it's always going to be here. And we'll see you soon on the next video, okay? All right, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.